Let's talk today about how to make a gorgeous heirloom granny stocking. This uses hexagon grannies plus a unique cuff that fits right into those. So no half hexagon grannies going on here. And even better, we're going to show you two different hexagons to work from so you can pick your style. Let's go. <music> Today we're going to choose between one of two granny hexagons. You have a choice of a traditional or a puff stitch and you can mix up the colors as much as you want. I've done the puff stitch in a solid wren and that worked out great, but you can always mix it up. And the traditional, I did the wren, the wasabi and the mink to make it a little bit different. And it also matches the advent calendar I did in this little collection. The other things you will need is you will want to have a crochet hook and this will be the size four millimeter G hook, some scissors, a tapestry needle. This is a cute tab from We Crochet that you can put on the stocking to hang your stocking or you can create your own eye cord or a leather tab that I'll show you how to do at the end of this video. It's completely up to you whatever type of tab you want to use. This is a quick and easy one that is brand new from We Crochet. Now I have a little extra for this and that's this cute little ornament. I like to hang this on the side of the stocking, but you could also use this on your tree. And I'm going to show you how to make this as well. I use a, some twine string for this one. So that's kind of nice, but then also some beads and you'll just want a stick to put at the bottom. We're going to start today by showing you how to make the traditional granny hexagon and we'll do the puff one next, but we're going to create a magic ring or a magic circle and then chain one. And in this magic ring, we will be doing first a stacked single crochet. And that's when we yarn over and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two. And then we're going back into that left bar, yarning over and pulling up one, yarning over and pulling through two. I have a full tutorial about this on my blog, but it is smart to mark that first stitch if you've never worked this before, because it can be difficult to see where the first stitch of the round is. This blends in nicely. And now we're going to do another double crochet and then chain one. And then we will do two double crochets into this magic ring and chain one. We're going to be doing that for a total of five times, which means at the end we will have 12 stitches and six chains. So we're just doing groupings of double crocheting two and chaining one all the way around. And now after working all of those stitches, we can go ahead and close that magic ring by pulling our tail end, and then we'll be ready for round two. Now for round two, we will be slip stitching into that very first stitch of the previous round. So that stacked single crochet, and then we will slip stitch into the next stitch as well. So we're working over until we get to that chain one space from the previous round. Now, if you are switching colors here, go ahead and fasten off your yarn. I've only done one slip stitch so far. And so for our next slip stitch, we are going to go ahead and grab the next color for this round and pull it through for that second slip stitch starting off this round. And now we're ready and set up with our new color to work into that chain one space from the previous round. We're going to insert our hook into that chain one space and work a stacked single crochet. But if you want to make things easier, you can work over your tail ends if you don't want to weave them in later. I don't recommend this for garments, but I'm totally fine working over my ends for something like this. So I'm going to start with a stacked single crochet and then a double crochet one into the same space and then a chain one. And now we're going to double crochet two more stitches into that chain space. And then we are going to chain one. Now we're going to do this repeat in the chain spaces all the way around, but the repeat will be to do two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets into each chain space around. And you can see I'm still working over those tail ends. I just don't want to weave them later, but you can give them a tug here and there to make sure that the tension is okay, but you don't want to pull them too tight. So repeat around by doing two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, then chain one. And we'll do that in each chain space around. Now, 
Now for round three, we're going to slip stitch to the first chain one space from the round below, but I'm also going to be changing colors. So I'm going to slip stitch one in the wren and I'm going to leave this color attached because I'll be using it again. But now I'm going to go ahead and grab the wasabi color that I want to use. And I'm going to slip stitch my second slip stitch of this round with the wasabi. And then we will be at that chain one space of the previous round and ready to get started. So working in that chain one space, we are going to do what we did kind of from the round below. We're going to start with a stacked single crochet. And then if you want to work over those tail ends, you can go ahead and work over the wasabi, but the wren is going to stay attached. We're going to use it again. So we don't need to work over it. We don't need to cut it off, at least for this coloring, but you can mix it up as much as you want. So now we'll be doing another double crochet stitch in that chain one space and then chain one and two double crochet into that same space again. And now we're going to chain one and in the next chain one space, we're going to do two double crochet stitches. And then we are going to chain one. So this will be our repeat. Now we're going to do two double crochet stitches, chain one, two double crochet stitches all into the next chain one space. And I'm still working over my tail end here. And then chain one. And now we're going to do two double crochet stitches in the next chain one space. And then chain one. And we'll be repeating that all the way around until we get to uh, back to the beginning of this round. Now for round four, I'm going to switch back to the wren color, but first I'm going to slip stitch one stitch in this color. And then for the next slip stitch, I'm simply going to bring the wren up from the back side up a, a row. And then it's fine if it just sits on the back. You just don't want to pull this too tight. And now I'm back to the wren color and we're ready to work in that chain one space. And I will be working around the, um, wasabi color, but I'm going to fasten it off first to make this a little bit easier. And now we're going to start this chain one space by doing what we've been doing before. We're going to start with a stacked single crochet and then another double crochet in that chain one space and then chain one and then two more double crochets in that chain one space. And then we will chain one and in the next chain one space, we will do two double crochets. Chain one and in the next chain one space, we'll do two double crochets. And chain one and this is going to be our repeat around. So in the next chain one space, we're going to start this repeat with doing two double crochets. And then chain one and two double crochets into that same chain one space. I like to pull that tail end every once in a while to make sure it's sitting nicely if you're working over it. And then chain one. And then in the next chain one space, we will work two double crochet stitches. And chain one. And then do that again in the next chain one, work two double crochet stitches and chain one. And that's our repeat to work all the way around. Now that we are done with this, we can go ahead and fasten this off and do an invisible join. You can slip stitch to the first stitch if you want, but now we need to make 12 of these. So it takes 12 of these to make a stocking and I highly recommend blocking each one. It's almost like ironing. It just makes it sit a bit better. It looks a bit better. So go ahead and make 12 of these, block them and then come on back and we'll talk about how to join them. Next, we're going to go over how to make this puff stitch hexagon. And this is the other option you have for this pattern. We're going to start with a magic circle for this hexagon as well. And we will start by using a stacked single crochet, kind of like how we did before on the previous one. 
And how we do that once again is insert our hook into the circle, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then go back through that horizontal bar on the left side, yarn over and pull up a loop, and yarn over and pull through two. And now we are going to mark that stitch if we need to so we know the beginning of this round. And next we will be double crocheting 11 more double crochets into this ring for a total of 12 stitches, including that stack single crochet. And now that we have all the stitches worked into that magic ring, we can go ahead and pull that closed tightly and we're ready to start working some of these awesome puff stitches. So we're not going to join. We're simply going to insert our hook into the first stitch and we're going to start by doing a modified puff stacked single. So we're going to pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two. And then we're going to go back through that left bar and pull up a loop, but we're going to stop right here and we're going to go ahead and work some of those puffs style stitches. So we're going to yarn over and insert into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and do that again. Yarn over and insert into the same stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I like to pull through all the loops except for the last one. And then I yarn over and pull through two. I feel like that just makes a really nice uh, looking puff stitch. So now we're going to chain one and then we're going to do that again. So now we're going to do a puff stitch this time where we yarn over and pull up a loop three times and then we yarn over and pull through six and then yarn over and pull through two and then chain one. So one more time we're going to yarn over and insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, do that two more times until you have a total of seven loops on your hook and then you will yarn over and pull through the first six and then we will yarn over and pull through the last two and chain one. The chain one will happen after every puff stitch in this round. Now we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. So you'll have a total of 12 puff stitches and 12 chain one spaces and we'll keep doing that until we get to the end of this round. Now that we are at the end of the round, it might pull in a little bit, but it'll flatten out. We're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. And now we're ready to work into that first chain one space. So we're going to insert our hook into the chain one space. And we're going to start by creating that stacked puff stitch where it's a modified stacked single crochet. We're kind of turning it into a puff stitch. And after creating the stacked puff stitch, we will chain one. And then we're going to do another puff stitch into that same chain one space. Now in the next chain one space, we're going to be doing a puff stitch, a chain one and a puff stitch all into that chain one space. And this is what will be our repeat all the way around. So at the end of this round, we will have 24 puff stitches and 12 chain stitches. So we'll keep doing that all the way around where we do a puff stitch, a chain one and a puff stitch into each chain one space around. Now you're really going to find this might curl in a bit at this point, but this next round is what will really even it out. But once again, if you're doing a smaller ornament, you're going to stop here at round three. Now to finish out round three, we are going to slip stitch to that uh, modified puff stack single crochet to join. And now we're ready to start round four. And in that first chain one space, we're going to do a stacked single crochet. And then we're going to do two more double crochets and then chain one and three double crochets into that chain one space. So we're placing a lot of stitches into that chain one space. And in the next chain one space, we are going to double crochet three. And in the next chain one space, we are going to do a three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet.
And this is going to be our repeat around. So in the next chain one space, we will double crochet three stitches. And then in the next chain one space, we will do three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. And then finish that off with doing the uh, three double crochets in the last chain one space of the round. So I'll come back when we get to that last chain one space. Now we are finishing this round by working three double crochets into that last chain one space. And now we are ready to fasten off and do a join. Now I just wanna show you how to do an invisible join with this. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to grab your yarn needle. Now this is one of my favorite joins. We're going to look at this second stitch in this round. So not the first, but the second. And we're going to insert our needle through that as if we were gonna crochet it and pull it all the way through. And then we're going to go back down the last stitch worked. So we're not adding or decreasing any stitches here. We're working over that first stitch, making this mock stitch that you'll see happen on the top. And now the stitch count is correct. And we've joined with a very invisible join. You'll need to make 12 of these, block them, and then we will go ahead and start joining them. And now comes the really fun part of joining these together. You can really use whatever method you prefer. I'm going to show you how to do a flat slip stitch and this will work for either one. It's just that the traditional one has a couple more stitches along the edges, but that's okay. It's the same method for both. So for this one, I'm gonna use an alternate color of yarn. I'm going to be using this brownish one so that we can see our stitches. So you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to start by inserting at the chain one space at the corner of one hexagon, and we're gonna be working these stitches together from this point to the next point. So we're only gonna be working from one point to the next point for this segment, and I will show you why in just a minute, but I wanna show you how to join these. Now I'm gonna insert from the top to the bottom of the chain one space on the other side. And notice I'm working in the back loops for both of these. So basically the back loop for one and the back loop for the other, and then I'm pulling up my yarn. I like to alternate which side I go down. So now I'm gonna go down this side and then grab the back loop from this side, yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. This is how we do a flat slip stitch to join. So now I'm gonna go back down on this side and then the other side and it's a little bit tricky because you are working your yarn from underneath here, but you're gonna pull it up and slip stitch these together. I find this works best if you really have a lot of wrist movement when you're doing this. So let that hook glide, twist between your fingers, rotate back and forth to get through all of those loops on your hook. So I'm gonna be working back and forth between these, creating that gorgeous slip stitch line and it's really fun to work this in a different color because you can really see it. It really makes the outline of the hexagon pop. In the other version, I'm going to make it blend a little bit more so you can see that difference. But I'm going to slip stitch from one chain one space corner to the other chain one space corner of these hexagons. And now that I am at the end, I'm going to fasten off and weave in these ends. So this is what we will be doing to a lot of these to kind of get us set up for the easiest way, I think, to uh, put this together without it being confusing. So you're going to be doing from point to point on several of these. I'm gonna show you that in the next clip. Now notice how I have done all these to this point. Now this bottom one right here, we actually gonna do a little bit more to it. But you can start out by doing a set of three, three, four, and then two, but for the two, we're actually gonna be working two edges, not one as you see on screen. I will show you that later. So just get started by doing um, what you see here with the four, the three, and then the three, and then these will all match up. And what you can do at this point is you can fold each one of these sections in and then join there too. So especially for these sets of three, we're gonna fold them in and do that slip stitch along those points as well. Now for the set of two, like I just said previously, we are gonna do that vertical line, but we're going to keep on going for one more side. This is the only one we'll be doing this way. The others will just be the one line in between to get set up for joining all these together. 
before the very bottom for this section where we're just doing two hexagons together, we're going to work along two sides joining them. And then once you are done doing the two sides, you can go ahead and set this aside for a little while till we get the rest going. So now that I've got these top sections and tubes, they fit together. You're simply going to take this, set it on top of the other one, and then we're going to slip stitch all the way around as they fit together. It's almost like putting together a puzzle piece. So you can simply start at one point and then join at the other side where they fit together really nice. And we'll be using the same uh, slip stitch method to join these. But when you get to those inner or point places where it's like a chain one space, but the other one is joined, we're simply going to be working those as one stitch. So previously when we worked those vertical lines, we joined at that chain one and we've kind of created that to become one stitch there. So you're going to slip stitch uh, the, the uh, flat slip stitch all the way around this matching up each stitch for each stitch on the opposite uh, hexagon. And this will create the top part of the stocking. And we're going to be working this all the way around until you get back to your starting point. And I just want you to see how this is working up all the way around, zoomed in a little bit more. Um, and we can see we're just working back and forth the same way we did again. We're just doing that in a little bit of a zigzag by the natural way that these fit together. And once again, when we get to these points, you want to make sure you're not adding any more stitches because we already joined the chain one spaces below and we're working one chain space from the one above. And now that we're back around, we can go ahead and fasten off and weave in that end. You can also kind of use that mock stitch here to hide where you started and you stopped um, working this all the way around. So you can grab your yarn needle and we can kind of do what we did before when we joined the uh, hexagons at the end of the last round. But we can loop through one of the stitches and create one of those mock stitches um, on the surface. So we're looping through a stitch as if we were to you know, single crochet through both those V's. And we're going to pull that through and then go back down the top of that last slip stitch down the center. And that creates a mock stitch that just makes it look a little bit nicer. And then you can weave in your end and fasten off. Now on to this next segment where we have four. So we've got all these together and now we need to make this one, but this one's a little bit different in that it's not going to join as a tube. We're actually going to be folding this and joining in a different spot for this one so that it works out. So we're actually going to not do this side. We're going to be doing this top side from point to point here. This is what's going to create the stocking shape. So that's where we want to do a vertical line, but just in a different spot. So now after joining this in a two, but doing it a little bit different by doing this one line down this side, now we're ready to bring this in and fit it together once again, like a puzzle piece, and then do that flat slip stitching all the way around the top open side of this stocking. And we can see here how it's going to fit nicely together as we work around in the same way as we just did before, but on this side. Now, while we only have two hexagons left, we do need to go ahead and do a little bit of prepping here before we join in these two hexagons. So on the stocking, this point to this point is going to be the heel. So we're not going to fasten it off when we get to the end of that point here. But what we need to do is we need to take this heel spot and we need to do that slip stitching for that section only. Now, here we go with the finale of seaming. And I know you've been doing a lot here. And it's, a, it's quite tricky in some spots, but I promise keep with me and this will be worth it. This is our two where we seamed along two of the sides and it just kind of folds in and this is going to be our toe. So we're going to fit this in here and we're going to start seaming all the way around. But you'll notice that we're going to start here and as we go, this is going to pop up words and seam as well. So once you get started going here as you fit it on the bottom, you're simply going to keep going all the way around seaming side to side to side and it will work out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this so you can see what I mean. This opening space can really only fit together one way. Now here we are where I've done this first part from the heel of this and now I'm going to just simply pull this uh, hexagon here to fit into this space and keep on going. So we're just 
continuing to match up edges and size of the hexagons as we go here. And this is what creates the shape of this stocking. Now you can see I've gone a little bit farther and now we only have a few sides left to join. I'm just gonna rotate around. Now on the other side of the stocking, we don't have much left. I only have two edges now. And this is where it starts to feel much easier after you worked along the front of this to get to the back of this. Now after working around, we can fasten off and then weave in our end. To finish off the top of the stocking, I did not want to do half hexagon. So I decided to create a ribbing that will go into these points of the top of the hexagon. Now I've chosen to start on one side, the heel side, and I've joined my yarn at the lower part. So not the point of the hexagon, but the lower part I've joined. And now we are going to chain 18. Now after chaining 18, we are going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. This will be a total of 17 single crochet stitches for this first row of the ribbing. Now after single crocheting 17, we're back to the body edge of the stocking, the top edge, and we will be slip stitching into the next two stitches in the back loop only. And we have this point here and we're going to be working to the chain one of this point and then the center stitch here at when it comes to the lowest point. And that will be like our opposite of that chain one. So we will be doing some decreasing and increasing with our ribbing stitches and those will be at each point. But this point here is one space. We don't want to join those uh, stitches again where we've got two chains there. It's just one space. So we're going to slip stitch into the back loop only in the next two stitches, and then we're going to turn. Now after turning my work, we're going to be doing a, a way of decreasing these ribbing stitches since that's what we need to do to work up this side. And we're going to skip the two slip stitches as well as the two single crochet stitches along this edge. And we'll start working in the back loop only to single crochet after skipping the two slip stitches, skipping two single crochet stitches. Then we will be single crocheting in the back loop only for the remaining stitches in the row, which will be 15 stitches because we've skipped two of the single crochet stitches. So we'll single crochet 15 stitches for this row and then come on back. Now I'm going to chain one and single crochet in the back loop only for each stitch across. But on the edges, if you want to single crochet through both loops, it makes it a little bit sharper on the outer edge. So I'm just going to single crochet in the back loop only for 15 stitches until I get back to the body part of the stocking. Now that we have single crocheted 15 single crochet stitches down this row, we're once again going to be slip stitching in the back loop only along the top edge of this stocking and turning our work. And then we are going to once again skip the two slip stitches and then also skip two, two stitches, single crochet stitches, so four in total, and working in the back loops only, single crochet. 13 across. So every single time we do that, it's decreasing by two stitches. Now we're going to turn again, chain one, and working in the back loops only, we will single crochet down this row for 13 stitches. Once again, we will slip stitch the next two stitches in the back loop only. Turn our work skip the two slip stitches and the two single crochet stitches and single crochet 11 across. And the row after this, you'll chain one after turning and single crochet in the back loop only for 11 as well until we get back down to the top of the stocking. And now after working those 11 stitches, we're going to slip stitch two stitches along the edge here, turn our work, and this time we'll be once again skipping the two slip stitches and the two single crochet stitches. And then we will single crochet nine in the back loop only. Now for this next row, we are going to chain one and we're going to decrease one more time. So the decrease will happen kind of at this top point. 
So I'm going to single crochet nine back down and then we'll turn and do that decrease. So we single crochet nine in that back loop and we are once again going to slip stitch the next two, but the, the last slip stitch that we'll be working for um, working it where we're doing the decreasing is at the point. So I've slip stitched two and we are at the chain one point. And I'm going to turn my work and we're going to do this one more time where we are going to skip four stitches. So we're going to skip the two slip stitches, skip the two single crochet, and then we will single crochet in the back loop only for seven stitches. So now for this row, we're going to do our increases along here to adjust our ribbing. So we'll start by single crocheting uh, in the first stitch and in the back loop only, we'll have a total of seven single crochet stitches. And now we're going to slip stitch in the back loop only of the next two stitches and then turn. Now here's where it gets a little bit different than what we've been doing before because we're going to be increasing here. That what we're going to do, and you may have to chain a one, we're going to chain one very tightly here. We're going to start in those slip stitches. So we're not skipping any stitches. We're going to start by single crocheting in the back loop only of those two slip stitches and then in the remaining seven across. So now we've increased to nine for this row. And now we're going to turn our work and we're going to single crochet in the back loop only for nine stitches. After working those nine stitches, we will slip stitch into the next two stitches in the back loop only from the top of the stocking and then turn our work. And for this, we need to chain one so that it's easier for us to work back into those slip stitches, but tighten that down and working into that very first slip stitch. We will single crochet in the back loop only, and this increases from nine to 11 stitches for this row. And then on the next row, you're simply going to chain one and single crochet in the back loop only for 11 stitches, and I'll come back after that row. Now after single crocheting for 11 in the back loop only, we're gonna once again do an increase here. We're gonna slip stitch the next two stitches, turn our work, chain one, and working in that very first slip stitch, we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. And this brings our stitch count to 13 stitches for this row. So I'm gonna keep increasing and working the way we have been until I get to the point here. So I've worked to where I've chained one and I've single crocheted 15 in the back loop only. And now I'm left with, once again, we're going to be doing the next stitch and then the point, basically like how we did the chain one row up here. This is going to be our chain one in this uh, divot here. So I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch in this, in this divot area, the point. Turn my work chain one because this is still an increasing row and in the very first slip stitch we're going to single crochet in the back loop only and we're going to do that for 17 stitches now i'm after single crocheting 17 we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the back loop only for 17 again but i'm going to show you what's going to happen next because we're right back where we started this is uh, kind of how we started after chaining 18 over here and then single crocheting in the uh, back loop only for 17. That's technically the row we're working on again. So we're almost back to the beginning of the repeat here in terms of doing those um, decreases and increases. Now, after single crocheting 17 stitches in the back loop only, we're going to go to our next stitch. So we already did like, don't go into this little area here. That's the chain one space. We're going to go into our next stitch. This is, you know, a double crochet stitch and we're going to single crochet into the back loop only of the next two stitches. And then we're going to turn our work. And this is where we're decreasing again. So we're going to skip the two slip stitches, skip the two single crochet, 
and kind of tightly in the in the next one because I like I don't want to like a huge gap there. We're going to single crochet in the back loop only for 15 stitches. So this is what we had done on uh, when we first started this. So we're right back at the stitch count that we had started doing on those very first rows. And we'll keep repeating these all the way around, working it as we're um, decreasing up this point and increasing down here. And then I'll show you how to join this once we get back to the beginning. Now, I just want to note that on these two different style of hexagons, this one has more stitches because of the chain one spaces than this one does. So when you're working it from the traditional style uh, granny hexagon, it will have more uh, rows in between here, just uh, the way that it's worked up. So the written pattern will indicate um, how to do those extra rows. We're actually going down to five at the point versus seven. So you're using the same method, but it is slightly different for stocking. Now that it's time to join our uh, last row worked with our first row, I wanna show you two ways to join. So first I'm gonna show you how to slip stitch join. Now, when it comes to joining these sides together using the crochet hook slip stitch method, I've chained one and I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only of our current row. And then I'm going to grab the loop from the first stitch of that first row. And then we're simply going to yarn over and slip stitch those together. So once again, through the back loop of the current row, grab the loop from the first row and slip stitch those together. And we'll work that all the way down until we have joined this seam. Now, once you are at the end here, you can go ahead and fasten off and weave in those ends. Now, another option is to grab your yarn needle and we are going to seam this. I fastened off, put my yarn needle on here, and I'm going to end up doing one loop stitch on the end just to set us up so we don't undo that last stitch. I'm just looping through it. And now I'm gonna go through the back loop only and down through the very first loop. I'm going down because I'm trying to layer these a little bit and mimic what we have going on here. And then I'm gonna come back up the next stitch and up through that back loop only. So we're just gonna be seaming those together. So down the back loop only, down the loop from the very first row, up the next stitch from the very first row, and then down the back loop only from our current row. So we're just seaming these together and kind of pull it tighter and you can kind of fix the top if you want um, by looping through a little bit more. But you can see this is a, a really nice seamless join. We're kind of just bringing these together, leaving that back loop exposed like we have on other rows to mimic that um, look. So now here's the difference in the seams. They both look great. It's really up to you which one you want to do. But I also want to note, don't overthink it because we are putting a tab on the side here and it's on the side. So a lot of it will be hidden and you're not really going to know what seam you did anyway. So it's whatever one you feel the most comfortable with. Now we're ready to put on a tab so that we can hang this stocking. And you have a couple choices here. You can do an I-cord loop here out of yarn to just create a little tab to hang it. Um, you can also use a uh, faux leather or scrap leather pieces like I have done here. I've punched holes with a leather punch. I'll show you how to do that. And I'm going to use this one. And then also Wheat Crochet just came out with these nice tabs that will also work that are pre-cut, pre-done, pre-holes. So you can always order those and put those on and those work great as well. Now, if you are using these leather tabs, what you'll want to do is with a leather hole punch, you'll want to take the end and create four holes so that you can secure it to your stocking. Next, we will be taking our yarn needle. I have some yarn on the inside here. I left my yarn needle there from when I was seaming it. We're gonna line up these tabs, whichever side that you want to face out. We're gonna stick it on the side here. And then on the inside, we're going to be lining up those um, holes. So we're gonna go down a hole on the inside, come up on the outside, 
And I like to make an X with mine. I think it's cute to do it that way and kind of reinforces it. I'm just going to keep going back and forth here. And if you want to loop through again, you can, and then simply tie it on the back and fasten off. Now we will be making this cute little tree using the green yarn and the same size four millimeter hook. To get started, we're going to create a magic circle or a magic ring. We'll go ahead and place our hook on there, chain one. And I like to chain one again, a little bit more for height. And now we're gonna yarn over and do a half double crochet. Mark the first stitch in the row if you need to, but we're gonna be doing two more half double crochets in that magic ring and then closing it. So we're doing three half double crochets for this very first row. And now we're going to turn our work and chain one. If you want, you can weave in this end and you don't have to wait for that. Like if you don't want it in the way, it's totally up to you. Now we're going to be working in that third loop. If you're unfamiliar with the third loop, I have some tutorials on it, but we have the top V's here. We're going to rotate. We're going to look at the front of our work. And this is the third loop. We're going to be half double crocheting into. And then in the, the next stitch, we're going to do three half double crochets. and then one half double crochet into that last stitch all in the third loop. So from here on out, we're working in the third loop. Now we're going to turn our work and chain one. And in that third loop, half double crochet, half double crochet in the next. And in the next, we're going to do three half double crochet stitches. And then in the last two stitches of this row, we will simply half double crochet. And now we're going to turn our work and chain one and we will half double crochet into the first three stitches of this row. And then in the next stitch, we will work three half double crochets all into that next stitch. And then we will half double crochet in the last three stitches of the row. Keeping all of them in the third loop. Now we will turn our work, chain one, half double crochet in the first four stitches of this row. In the next stitch, we will do three half double crochets into that one stitch. And then we will half double crochet in the last four stitches of this row. And now we're going to turn our work again. And this will be our last row for these small ornaments. And we are going to do a half double crochet into the very first five stitches. And then three half double crochet into the next. and then half double crochet in the five last stitches of this row. Now for this, you'll want to definitely weave in this end, but you'll be making two of these. Now the very first one, you're gonna fasten off and weave in both ends. On the second one you make, you are not gonna fasten off your yarn end. The reason why is because we're going to go ahead and join these. So we don't want to fasten off yet. So I'm just going to weave in this top end to prep for that. Now have your stick ready for this next part because we are going to be putting it inside of this cute little tree. So we'll start by placing this tree on top of this tree. You can chain one. And then we're going to slip stitch through each layer all the way around. So we're holding these together and we are slip stitching the stitches along the edges all the way around. And then on each corner, so you're talking here, here, and here, 
When you get to the corners, you can chain one for a bit of a sharper look. And I'll show you what I mean coming up. And now that we are at the top of this tree, I can chain one and then go right into the next um, joining these. And that chain one up top just helps that be a little bit more pronounced at the top of the tree. And now I'm just gonna keep slip stitching until I get to the next corner over here. And now at this other corner, we're going to chain one. And now this is a bit easier because we've got stitches to work with. We're not just working with raw edges. I like to work through the back loop and the front loop, giving a bit more dimension, just slip stitching those together. Now we're only going to slip stitch until we get to this center point because we will want to insert our stick. Now I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to stop shy of that center point. And now we're going to go ahead and insert our stick here. Just going to slide it into our tree. That way it has a cute little stump. And now what we're going to do is we're going to skip the next stitch and then slip stitch together the next one. And this will make it kind of tight around there so it should stay. But if you are worried about it at all, feel free to add a little bit of glue to that stick before inserting it, some fabric glue or even hot glue. It'll be on the inside. But um, I, I really haven't had issues with the stick falling out very easily and you can always put it back in. But if you're worried at all, like I said, feel free to use some craft glue and glue it to the inside before continuing to slip stitch. And now that I'm on the other side, I can fasten off and weave in my ends. Next, we'll want to cut a piece of twine. You can use yarn. It's completely up to you. I just love the look of the natural twine with these. And we're going to grab our crochet hook here. And where we chained one at the top, we're going to pull through both ends so both end strands of this and then we're going to do what's called the lark head knot you're simply going to take the big loop we just created and pull the ends through and pull it down and that will secure it tightly and then the next step is to add on the beads which a lot of times for the first bead I can uh, just simply weave it through without a yarn needle but as you get going you'll probably want to get a yarn needle for the other strand here so that you can weave it through easier. I can't push both of these uh, strands through and through uh, beads, so I use a smaller needle here, and it's kind of tricky with these splitting ends. I don't mind the split ends once we're done, but I don't really want them when we're starting here. And so I'm simply going to weave through here and pull that bead all the way down. And then here's where we're going to tie a knot. I'm just going to simply pull all those strands through. It helps separate out the beads and adds a little bit of extra to it. Um, you don't have to. You can do this however you want. You don't have to do this step. You don't even have to add this to the stocking, but I just want to give it as an option. I love adding beads to holiday stuff. I feel like it adds that like chic farmhouse look to it. Um, I really enjoy doing that. Tie the top knot, and then we can attach it to our stocking. So you can use this as an ornament for anything. This is cute to tie to a wine bottle, but I thought it'd be cute to put on the stockings. It's just a cute, adorable ornament. Now, last but not least, we can bring in, now last but not least, we can bring in our cute little accessory here, loop it around and simply just tie it in place. And I like to do a cute little bow because the twine kind of adds a bit to it. So you can tie a little bow. I would definitely double knot this just because you don't want it to, to get lost or come off. And then you've got the cutest little ornament hanging off of this stocking, which adds just a little bit more to it, which I completely adore. Um, and that way when it hangs, you just got a little bit of a pop of color with this one. Now these are really cute stockings. I love the look of the granny hexagon. And you can see you can make it the same type of pattern just using different granny hexagons and get a completely different look. This is like a brand new pattern over here. Um, whether you use the puff stitch or the traditional, it's so fun. You can even mix up the colors on the puff stitch if you want to do something like this um, because it's the same amount of rounds. 
Um, it's really fun to make these and I love this extra little touch. I hope you have enjoyed this pattern and hit that subscribe button to come back for some more fun projects soon.